We're live. What's up, everybody? You can hear me? How we doing? Friday night? Saturday morning, depending on where you are. I hope you're well. Thanks for joining. Guess I should just, oh, there it is. The strike of the top of the hour. What's up, Peter? Elias, welcome. Good to see you guys. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, back with another, uh, this time a little bit of a different topic, Rhythm Styles Workshop. And what I realized is that this is probably going to be a series. Since I had uh, a lot of ideas that didn't make it into this uh, first installment. I'm good. How are you doing, Peter? Andre, good to see you. Um, this will be volume one. Okay. What's up, Ron R. from Boston? Excellent. Welcome. Good to see you. Uh, so for those of you joining for the first time, Richard, Rick Sticks, what's up, Keith? Hello, Terry from Vegas. Excellent. Jim Gregory, what's up? Greetings, indeed. Craig from Melbourne, good day. Awesome. Jeff Moore, good to see you. Jody One and Craig, right on, everybody. Thanks so much for joining. If you're new to us, uh, we do have some tabs in a PDF. Uh, just expand the description down below. There should be a link. Shout out from the OC. What's up, Ed? Ed good to see you, Chad. All right. We got all the uh, the regulars. I appreciate you guys joining in, uh, always tuning in this time. And uh, hello, hello. All right. So we got the handout. We're going to go through just uh, some different stylistic things, I think. And we'll start sort of basic a little bit, see a few things. Hopefully, once again, with, with these sessions, what I hope to do is just sort of expose you to something, uh, just a little tidbit here and there that maybe you haven't explored or haven't seen before or haven't tried to do, and uh, see if you can incorporate it into your playing a little bit. Maybe spark a little inspiration and spark a little bit of practice uh, trying to get an approach or some sort of technique down, all right? What's up? Acoustic day today. We're going to start on the acoustic, but uh, we'll, we'll switch over after a couple exercises, all right? What's up, C. Calloway? Howdy, good to see you. Pittsburgh, Kenneth, good to see you. Zane, all right, Every, got repeat customers all the time. I appreciate that, thanks guys. Everybody, Duke from Missouri, of course, Judah, of course, thank you. So if you wanna refer to the handout, uh, I started off just on the acoustic with a simple folk strum a uh, really simple progression, just two chords. First thing to notice, though, is that uh, I used an open C chord with the low G added to it. it was sort of something that uh, Bob Dylan did back in the day. And uh, I believe uh, probably a, a lot more guitarists other than that, but uh, it came to mind. I was thinking about, you know, folk strumming and... Uh, was definitely a song that I taught for guitar tricks from Bob Dylan that had the low fifth, Johnny Cash. There you go. It's obviously not the only artist to employ this, but usually what we'll do is we'll grab an open C chord, third fret of the A, second fret of the D, and the first fret of the B string with the open G and high E string, and leave the low string out of the equation, right? But uh, you can thicken it up a little bit if you just uh, move your ring finger to the low string and add your pinky on the third fret of the A. Okay, George Wayne, what's up, Chad? Oh, man, spirit of the radio, it is. Keep with it, man. <laughs> Rush songs are not easy. So just keep kicking away at it, all right? That's awesome you're working on that. Uh, so, yeah, just putting that pinky in on the A string, or the fifth string. And you get that thicker kind of sound. Now let's look at the strumming pattern, try to decipher what's happening here. Uh, we've got two eighth notes and we've got downstrokes on those. Yeah, times they are changing. I, that must be the one, Elias. Good call right there. I think that is. All right. And uh, so I've got like two downstrokes on the one and the end of one, one and. And then on the second beat is going to be a down, up, down, right? 
So if you put those together, you end up with down, 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 up, down. And then it repeats for the second half of the bar. So you're like. Really nice strum pattern there. So what you want to kind of do if this is new to you, uh, get make sure you're doing that strum pattern correctly with the downs and ups all in the right spot. And get it so that you're nice and flowing nice and then burn it in with some repetition so that if you want to speed that up to a little more like, you know, some of these faster kind of Bob Dylan songs. Okay, that's sort of what I was envisioning for this was a little bit of a faster tempo. This isn't in 3-4, it's 4-4, four, four, okay? One, two, three, four, okay? So if you look at it, you've got four chunks on the staff. You've got the first one is two eighth notes. The second one is two sixteenth notes and an eighth note. We know that uh, two sixteenth notes add up to the time of one eighth note. So we're just adding in a down up in that space of time instead of just a down stroke, which would be an eighth note, right? So if you count those, you've got four clusters of eighth notes, the second one being an eighth note and two sixteenth notes, it all adds up to four, four. Okay. Oh, right on Peter. Yeah. New acquisition. I thought I'd throw it up there to put a little something interesting behind here. I believe that's an Amazon. Uh, my wife maybe got that for father's day or something like that. Finally got around to putting it up. Oh, cheers everybody. Oh, no problem at all, Ed. No problem at all. This is all about figuring it out and uh, and getting it getting it down so that you understand it. Okay, so that's totally all part of it. No problem at all. So uh, you'll see in the second bar, I switch to the E minor chord. Okay, so that's just the second fret of the A and D. Uh, low string uh, is open, and then the top three strings are open. And so when you put that together, I'm going to go slow. And it's right? We just repeat that. So let's try that. Whoops. Okay. So uh, to speed this up, into more of sort of like a fast moving folk song, you might do something like. Mess it up. Could also be kind of a country groove too, right? When you start to get fast like that a little bit. So really the key here is just to, you know, keep this strumming arm as loose as possible. When you tight, when you tend to lock it up a little bit, throws off the feel a little bit. It makes it a lot harder to do the upstroke, right? But if it's nice and loose, kind of with your wrist and your arm flowing a little bit, now what I'm doing naturally here is actually kind of doing low part of the chord first and then the full strum. And I, I didn't actually do it, uh, I didn't uh, notate it that way, so. So right, you're right, Ron. I just was catching that, like I was accent, accenting that second downbeat, but also sort of playing the lower part of the chord. So there's a lot of different ways that you could kind of approach this kind of thing, right? And we're talking about styles a little bit. So definitely, uh, you know, could be kind of country if it's faster like that. Could be folky, right? And uh, certainly if it's a little bit slower, it's a lot easier to play that all consistently. So you're not accenting any of those beats and just... Right? 
Now, George has got a question here for a trick for really fast strumming that would match a disco beat. Um, I, I think when we get to the sort of the funk area of, of this lesson, we'll talk a little more about that, but I didn't do anything specifically disco, but I will do it in volume two, okay? There was a couple styles I had to leave out. I kind of just went for a cross section in this first volume, but we can touch on a lot of different uh, stylistic things. So I'm just going to write that down, disco vol two. I'll talk it, a, a little bit about disco when we get to the funk. I, I feel like that's sort of the closest thing that I would I would think about, but uh, <laughs> no acoustic guitar and disco. There you go. <laughs> uh, we'll get to the electric in a sec. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave exercise one, sort of just a straightforward strum, and just realize all the sort of variations that you can take that in different areas. Uh, number two, I, I was thinking Ed Sheeran in number two, sort of this modern pop uh, sort of acoustic sound. Of course, any of these, you can you can actually transfer any of these over to electric as well with great results, okay? It's just uh, probably a little more common, these kind of things on the acoustic, right? But we'll get to the electric in a set, in a sec. It's ready to, it's ready to rock. We'll just do it. Do I like lighter picks for fast drums? Generally, I do like the thinner picks for the acoustic. It just feels better to me. But on the electric, I do have the thicker ones, closer to uh, one millimeter. So I really like to dig in on the electric or at least have the option to be able to just really dig in. Um, on the acoustic, I find it just sounds really rich and full if you've got like a lighter, more relaxed, you know, and not, you know, sometimes you don't want that on acoustic. Yeah, I think my pick is somewhere around there too, about 0.73. Are there any rules for chord progressions in relation to styles? I don't think so. Rick Sticks, I, 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 I wouldn't limit you that way, I don't think. Uh, I mean, just sort of general rules like modern pop might be, uh, you know, stick baby to major and minor chords a lot, you know, like sort of simple chord progressions, but there's also sophisticated pop music uh, that uses all sorts of extended chords and rich chord uh, chords in their uh, progressions. As far as the progressions themselves, there aren't really any rules. Um, in blues, when we get to the blues section, it's just very common to do one, four, five, right? Um, but that's not a hard, fast rule. So I would just say that there are sort of common things, but as far as rules, I don't like that word rules, right? There might be some commonalities in certain styles, but uh, certainly you can kind of break the rules in any style, right? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so exercise two, modern pop. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that we're, we've got this chord progression, A minor, going to an F chord, okay? <laughs> going to a C chord and going to a G chord. So this is a very common progression, right? So let's look at what I've notated here, because this is sort of a stylistic thing I hear a lot in sort of a lot more modern kind of acoustic pop. And uh, I'll play it the way that I notated it first, and then I'll show you sort of some things to make it even further, a little more uh, sort of like the Ed Sheeran kind of thing. Uh, so we've got the root note, which is the open A string. And then strumming the whole chord on the next downbeat, but then notice the change to the root of the next chord, which is F, is on the and of two. Okay, one and two and, and you hold that out until the fourth beat for the full chord. So you start having this sort of rhythmic shape to it. sense you can kind of hear the shape of what's happening with those chord changes right, so that's pretty much how I've notated it but if you want to get it a little more to kind of what I was thinking for this use the fingers okay and then this kind of thing Right? 
So I'm using my fingers to my thumb to hit the, the low, and then I'm plucking with my free fingers on the upper parts of the chords. Right? Uh, yes, in this case, uh, good question, Ron, here. Do I hit it with the, uh, with the downstroke? <laughs> Would that work for Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran? Oh, man, I have to kind of, I think that song's in a different meter. I think that's in 6-8, isn't it? Uh, but it has a similar thing for sure. Um, getting back to Ron's question, um, I did everything with downstrokes just because I'm playing it at a slower tempo. So what you'll find at a slower tempo is that you can play everything with downstrokes, at least uh, eighth notes, right? If we start to get into 16th notes, even if it's a slow tempo, you might want to start adding the upstroke, right? But uh, if you think about this tempo, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and it's it's pretty okay you know it's going to be doable to keep that going like that and in fact it's a little bit harder to go one, one two and three and four and one and two and three and four and at this lower tempo it's actually kind of hard to keep that smooth and nice. So uh, for something lower tempo, I would think about if it's eighth notes, think about the downstrokes, okay? What's up, John? Good to see you. Okay, so let's talk about the fingers then. I'm just going to go back over what I kind of... That kind of vibe, right, is very Ed Sheeran, I feel like. It's... And you can even think about adding in little extra, you know, moves with the thumb, right? That kind of idea, okay? Uh, I think that's, you know, John Mayer, Ed Sheeran, lots, lots of stuff right kind of has a little bit of that vibe these days uh so yeah check it out see if uh it's something you can incorp incorporate and you know you can take any chord progression any sets of chords and just try these approaches a little bit right cool cool all right so uh next one number three the arpeggiated could also be done with finger picking and uh, some of you, uh, Peter's still on here, probably recognize this progression. Okay, staying with, uh, with number two just for a little more. Are you just plucking the last two strings with the finger picking? Uh, it, it's sort of open-ended, right? Like I, if I hit, <laughs> cool, Peter. If I get the, uh, like for example, the A minor. Okay, I hit the thumb, and then I'm plucking the D, G, and B. Same thing with the F chord, but I switch the thumb to the low string, right? But you can change strings, right? Like, uh, for example, what if I hit the F note on the F chord, but then pluck the top three strings of that chord? It gives you a little bit of a different sound, but it's totally wide open for you to do that, right? Back to the C chord, same thing, and then the G. Maybe I want to get the top three strings on that. Uh, when I started embellishing it a little bit, I, st I would drag the, th the thumb down to the next thing in the chord and then just do a pluck on the on the G and B string, right? So so there's lots of different variations that you can kind of cook up and uh, experiment with different ways to highlight those chords, 
Okay, so I kind of just played it a whole bunch of different ways. Um, <laughs> That kind of thing, right? Hopefully that helps, Elias. All right, uh, exercise three. Um, so playing off an A minor chord in a little bit of a pickup arpeggiation, just sort of the last eighth note before we get into the, the picking. The arpeggiation itself is very straightforward. It's straight up the strings and back down. Again, this is a rock pop kind of uh, uh, approach here, so. Uh, so one and two and three and four. All right. Just straight up chord uh, arpeggiation. And I used a pick and you can loop this, right? So... Uh, Now, of course, I used a pick. You can use your fingers as well, right? So uh, I always find that, you know, finger picking technique is sort of whatever you're comfortable with and uh, kind of, you know, what you want to do with uh, uh, your thumb, basically, because uh, you can kind of bake it. You can, from the A string all the way up, you can use your thumb on the A string all the way up to the high E string, right? Um, what I tend to do is always start with that thumb on the open A string and then just bring it down to the D string as well. So that way I can use my dominant fingers here, the index, middle, and ring finger. Okay. So what would, he, what would we call these chords? So I think we actually went through this a couple of weeks ago with our uh, chord series. And when you move that fifth to say the uh, F note right here, okay, you could actually call this an F major seven over A, right? And then this one could be a, uh, a six, add six, A minor add six. Not sure, I'd have to look that one up, but we're basically moving the minor six. Yeah, or sharp six, maybe. <laughs> Uh, Chad, I seem to be able to go faster with a pick. Is that correct? As opposed to using fingers. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot. It's just all about developing the fingers, right? Like it, people can develop, uh, you know, a lot of players can develop their fingers to go really quick. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would say, Jim, don't worry about it. Like, really, you're thinking about an A minor chord that's just moving from the fifth to the flat six to the six and then back down. Okay. But really, the top part of the chord, it really has that A minor t tonality, and you're sort of shifting a note over top of it. So, uh, yeah, you don't have to think necessarily in terms of a progression. It's more of just sort of a arpeggiated figure that has a melody built into it. What's up, Osbrinks? Good to see you. Excellent. Yeah, Chad, uh, absolutely. You can go faster. If you go faster with the pick, that's totally cool, too but uh, you can develop those fingers to go quite fast, right? So, uh, that's sort of the idea with that one, right? <laughs> cool, all right, so uh, at the very least, Yes, this is a great one to just practice with the fingers. Like I said, A string with the thumb and then going dropping down to the D string and then using your more dominant fingers 
on those top strings and just go slow with it. It's just like any of this stuff. You got to go slow. You got to burn it in over and over nice and slow to be able to pick up the speed. Okay. So for some of you, that's going to mean like Chad, for example, the pick is going to be the faster choice, but then you can go, well, I want to be able to finger pick that fast. So it's just about being intentional, practice it, start slow and make sure you start training those fingers, programming those muscles, right? Cool, cool. All right, excellent. I'm uh, going to switch to the electric now to exercise four. And this is sort of in the vein, a little bit of just, uh, this is sort of my lack, last uh, rock um, example for this volume one of rhythm styles. And uh, a little bit of syncopation going on using some mostly open chords. Okay, so sort of in the ACDC vein a little bit. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. This is one of those things where I've notated out with uh, downstrokes and upstrokes. It seems like I've neglected to do the last three strums there, which are an up, down, down. Okay. Uh, but uh, you could do this all with downstrokes, right? If you're playing at sort of that medium tempo. <laughs> What's up, Rusty? <laughs> nice to see you. Okay, so we got like this open A chord. Right on, Ed. I have to check out Jared James' rips, man. And he only uses his fingers, so there you go. <laughs> Ripping it. All right, so we got the open A chord, open A string, second fret barring down on the D, G, and B. Right, and just switching from that to like an open D5. So I've still got the low A string open as well as the open D but going to the second fret of the G third fret of the B really common kind of going back and forth between those two chords right and then we're going to a chord that we've seen plenty of times on this session here with the low F sharp note curling your finger around to mute the A string, and you've still got the open D, second fret of the G, third fret of the B. That's your D5 slash F sharp. And then the big open G power chord, basically, third fret of the low string, once again, curling your finger to mute that A string. Open D, open G string, third fret of the B and high E string. So check out this syncopation because the upstrokes happen, and there's a lot of them, on the ands in between the beats. So one and two and, 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 and three, four, right? Oh, keep messing it up. Okay, so, uh, you know, pick up the pace on that a little bit and start using all downstrokes with that once you're sort of clear on where those strums happen. And again, it's called syncopated because a lot of the chord strums are happening in between the beats, right? Cool. All right. So syncopation, really important. You're going to see that in all styles, but this is sort of a typical rock, straight up rock kind of thing. <laughs> hey, thanks, Peter. Appreciate it. Yeah, sort of the daily player a little bit. Uh, I know I've been using the Wolf. I got to get the Wolfgang out here a little bit more uh, also. Love that one too. Wow. I love to pl try to play all of them equally. All right. So uh on to page two right and we've got a bunch of stuff here uh we're getting into the blues now okay so and what's cool about the blues is that it's a style all in itself but the blues is borrowed 
in all the other styles, right? You hear a lot of blues in country and rock and jazz, right? It's just sort of a universal stylistic thing that you can pop into other styles. So a good understanding of blues is super helpful. It doesn't matter what style of guitar you want to play. Um, you're always going to encounter some bluesisms, right? Uh, so the first one that I, uh, the first exercise here is the blues shuffle strum. Okay. And yes, gospel. Absolutely. All right. So we've got, uh, what are we doing here? A B flat seven. <laughs> Ron, good one. All right, bar bar chord sixth fret, barring down, adding the eighth fret of the, of the A string, seventh fret of the G string, and so the first thing we want to talk about is the actual shuffle groove, okay? Because when we're doing an eighth note straight groove, you're going to hear those downs and upstrokes happen evenly, right? One and two and three and four and there's the same amount of space between each strum. One and two and three and four and. And what you get with the blue shuffle is, as you can see, actually, as denoted at the top of the staff here with the two eighth notes actually equaling a, a quarter note with an eighth note sort of triplet, right? This, what this is telling you is that it's an eighth note shuffle, which means down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So you're pushing that upstroke closer to the next downstroke, and it creates that bounce, right? So instead of one and two and three and four and, you're getting one and two and three and four. Okay? That's what we're going for. That gives it that bounce, that blue shuffle, right? Go back up to our B flat seven and just get that going a little bit. One, two, three, four. Okay, foot tapping is essential here. Nice and loose here, right? Now I've notated it, you can see that on my downstroke, I'm mostly just doing the low strings, and on the upstroke, I'm mostly doing the high strings. This isn't an exact science, it's just showing you that roughly what kind of ends up happening when you got this groove going. And that way it gives you a little bit of a uh, texture in the sound of the part, right? Like instead of, like you could do this, all the strings up and down. Okay, that's totally equally cool as well, right? But if you do it the way where you've got the low and then the high, it gives it just a little more groove, a little more texture, right? So, versus, right? Which sometimes that fits, right? But other times, if you wanna get a little more groovier, a little bouncier. Cool. So second bar, we're just going to switch to the four chord. Every fourth note accented by that hand drop. Well, I guess what I was doing there a little bit, Andre, was thinking about where the snare drum might go, right? Because if you think of a shuffled drum, bump to snare, kick to snare, and kick to snare, that's like every second downstroke. And that's where you're emphasizing the backbeat a little bit, okay? So yeah, even more dynamic, even more texture you can add to this. What's up, Jeff? Good to see you. Okay. So once again, lots of different little variations that you can mess around with here to just give it a little bit more feel, a little bit more uh, uh, texture, right? So second bar, I'm just going to go to the E flat. 
E flat seven, right? Bar chord. Yeah, drop in some sleazy lead. Exactly, Vincent. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Absolutely, Peter. Thousand percent right there. I love it. Vincent, yeah. Something like that, right? Okay. Bar down at the sixth fret from the A string all the way up, adding the eighth fret of the D, eighth fret of the B. You've got the E flat seven, okay? Which is root five bar chord right there, right? So just work on going back and forth. So there's a tried and true shuffle strum groove, right? And in 5B, what we've got is the classic blues boogie shuffle. And once again, here's another thing that you can pop into all sorts of other genres, okay? F7, absolutely. We go to F7, right? I just, I cut it off a little bit. I didn't do the 12 bar blues, but yeah, the five chord would be F7. So what are you going to do? You're going to move up. E flat seven, two frets, right? Hmm. You can add in a little turnaround, whatever you want to do. But yeah, you got your F seven, two frets up. And you've also got the, as I've used many times showing you, the C seven open chord. Move that so that the root notes F on the eighth fret of the A, right? Whoops. And just strum all the, the fretted notes from the A to the B string. And you don't even have to change positions, right? You've got one, four, five. And that one sounds great too, right? So. Cool, cool, absolutely, all right? As for the boogie, okay, I move it up a little bit because we got some stretching going on. So I moved it up to C, eighth fret of the low string, tenth fret of the A string. So we still got that sush, uh, shuffle groove, right? Right, and if you were to adapt this to to a rock song in straight time. You can totally do that too and have more of the Chuck Berry thing, right? But if we want the shuffle, if you want the blues shuffle, now, yeah, Jay Giles, right? And so, what we need to do is uh, think about the doing all downstrokes on this, right? So now this is a great exercise if you wanna practice your downstrokes and still have that shuffle feel because you're gonna to have to do a downstroke and then the next downstroke is sort of delayed for that and, and you just gotta try and pick up that bounce. So if, if you don't have the confidence to be able to do that, work on that nice and slow, but. You could also do it with the down up if you wanted to go a little bit faster, but a little bit slow. Sounds really good with downstrokes. So I would recommend learning how to do that shuffle with all downstrokes too, because that's super valuable, right? And then we move that up to the uh, A string. And now you've got your F, which is the four chord. And of course, if I didn't notate it, but if you want to add your five chord, just move it up two frets and do the exact same thing up at the 10th position, right? 10th and 12th. Right? Cool, cool. Excellent. Okay. Moving on from the blues, like I said, blues, it's, it's going to help you in any genre. 
All right, so R and B. Thought I'd throw in a little R and B example here. That uh, usually, you know, we've done a lot of kind of R and B stuff in the past. That's really mm -hmm. focused on the backbeat, where you're like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which is the quintessential sort of stylistic thing for an R and B kind of sound. Uh, but there's another uh, hallmark of R and B that I don't think we've we've talked about yet. It involves palm muting. And they call this a bubble line. And you might recognize sort of the sound of this kind of thing. And let's see if I can pick it up. Okay. And so a lot, of, there's plenty of music. Like I'm hearing like the new John Mayer stuff that's out now. He's like do, doing stuff like that to it. Modern R&B stuff. Uh, oh, wow, 99 red balloons. There you go. I, I hear it totally. Not necessarily in this sort of palm muted clean guitar style. A um, little more wide open kind of idea with the melodic thing. <laughs> Not what I was thinking when I came up with this, but I'm actually playing it an octave, a uh, whole step up. Maybe, maybe I caught the key of 99 luff balloons there. So let's break it down a little bit, playing off this D note, right? Seventh fret of the G string. So you've got a D triad right there, D, G, and B string. And you also have, those are notes from the major pentatonic scale. Okay, so just playing major pentatonic, coming in seven and nine on the D, landing on seven, which is our D note, which is sort of our root note on the G string. That kind of idea, and it, it can be busy. Like uh, there's lots of songs where that's a busy kind of melody going on, percolating kind of underneath, or it could be very simple. Right? Just adding in lots of space as well and just having that little bubble thing coming up. Really cool approach, really cool sound, right? So let me, let me try and play it one more time here. Cool stuff, especially, uh, you know, I, li I like this kind of stuff on the neck pickup of a Strat kind of guitar, right? It kind of sounds right. Uh, clean sound. And yes, Chad, absolutely. Put a little bit of delay on that, pinging around. Nice stuff indeed, okay? <laughs> Absolutely, so yeah, big part of this is the palm muting. Okay, if I don't do any muting with it. Right, really pops out and it's really overbearing. You get like a, a karate chop down on those strings and I'm just like dampening right by the saddles of the bridge. That's the sound we're going for, okay? So palm muting. Most of the time when you think about palm muting, we're palm muting power chords, that kind of thing, right? But comes in great for this kind of stuff. That kind of stuff. Our arpeggiation, right? Chord arpeggiation with palm muting is really cool. That kind of stuff, right? right? Just got it down on the strings, just lightly, right? Maybe you could let like a couple notes fly out a little bit. That kind of stuff. Palm muting, absolutely. Peter, uh, check it out on Guitar Tricks, all right? Like uh, any of these guitar sort of techniques, uh, technique stuff, there's a guitar techniques section on Guitar Tricks. If you go to the homepage, go to Experience Lessons, there's a whole bunch of uh, menu items. And one of them is Technique. And it takes you to a page with all list of all sorts of techniques and palm mutings in there. Okay, and you got exercises and all kind of stuff for that. So uh, check it out.
All right, then we're going to go to number seven here. Thank you, Vincent. I appreciate that. And yeah, you say Jamaica. Wow, kind of going uh, sort of in that land a little bit with more of the fast ska thing in number seven. Okay, so uh, we've got a B minor from the D string all the way up, ninth fret of the D barring down the seventh fret of the top three strings. Now, what we've got here with ska is that it's fast moving. Okay, one, two, three, full, one, two, three, four. And you're hitting the upstrokes in between those beats. So that you'll see on the notation, you've got that little seven looking thing on the staff. That's an eighth note rest, right? It's an eighth note rest, so. And then in the second bar, we're going to an E minor from the B minor. So it's ninth fret of the D and G, eighth fret of the B, seventh fret of the high string, so. Scott can get going real fast, right? Now I'm adding in a little bit of that downstroke, muted, right? Makes it a little more percussive. Uh, you can keep it clean without that downstroke. And then just do the karate chop to cut it off, right? See what I'm doing there? Yeah, sublime. I would say so. And I, we have uh, the wrong way or the long way. What is it? Wrong way. We got a sublime song that, that we taught on Guitar Tricks. And it has that, that idea to it. It's really fast kind of upstrokes. Okay? So that's a great training for that style for sure. Yeah, I would think sublime is sort of definitely taking a ska thing into alternative rock basically. Well, there are a mix of a whole bunch of styles, but uh, definitely a ska thing, right? So yeah, either you want to practice no downstroke muted and just the clean up strokes, but you kind of have to mute with the karate chop in between. Or you can actually add in that downstroke as a mute. So you're going to be pulling off the chord and allowing yourself to do a muted strum. You see what I'm doing here is I'm pushing the frets, the strings onto the frets on and off, right? You see how I come off the chord just by pulling my fingers off the frets but not the strings, okay? So if they're off the, the frets, I can do a downstroke mute, right? Yeah, I'm not strumming the, the A string. Yeah, uh, I'm, I can mute it a little bit, actually, if I happen to hit it. I'm not strumming it. But also, if I happen to hit it, you can position whatever the finger is on the D string. You can kind of just move up a little bit of flesh, right? See what I'm doing with that ring finger? It's just touching the A string. I'm pressing down on the D string, but allowing some flesh to get on the A string so that even if I strummed that A string by accident, right? If you get going fast, it's gonna be, right? But uh, you can kind of ensure a little bit of muting in there as well by doing little tricks like that. So that's a cool one. <laughs> yeah, London Calling, all that kind of stuff, man, absolutely. Cool. All right, a couple more left. Uh, for this volume one, I'm getting, uh, uh, getting to see a few things that maybe you haven't seen before or think, oh, cool, I want to work on this a little bit. Uh, so country. Let's talk a little bit about country. And this is sort of what I came up with for this. And we have uh, sort of an older country song called uh, Working Man Blues, which is on Guitar Tricks. Sort of this idea of uh, some picking and plucking. I call it the country pluck plucked style, and the exercise is like this. Ah. Ah. 
So it's hybrid picking, okay? I've got the pick going on the low string. Okay, and once I get up to the fifth fret, I can bar down. And with my middle and ring finger, okay, I am hammering on from five to six on the G string. Still holding down the fifth fret, okay? Okay, so plucking on the D and G, hammering on on the G from five to six. And then there's a little pick on the root note with some palm muting. So I'm kind of hitting it with the karate chop on the low string and coming back up with a pluck once again on the D and G string, seventh fret. Okay, and then I go back and repeat that. Okay. And then the, the, the fourth pluck is just on the fifth and sixth fret of the D and G. Okay, so. With no hammer on, on the fourth one, so. You can take that idea and change it into going to the four chord. I'm going to go up and do it off a D7. Now, just to be clear, like I'm using just the D and G string here, okay? And there's uh, hammering onto the sixth fret of the G string. That's outlining an A7. Okay, so you're really playing out of an A7, but you've just got the root, and then you've got these two notes on the D and G string. Okay, now you can apply this to D7 with mostly the same thing, right? Okay, everything can be transposed to the A string, all the low notes. And then you're playing out of this shape. So now you've got different fingers doing stuff, okay? So I've got, I'm barring down on the fifth fret. So for this D7, I'm going from the sixth fret, hammering onto the seventh fret, and I'm barring down on the G string, okay? And then, uh, getting my pinky on the eighth fret, okay? So I'm holding this D7 shape, but working these notes, six, seven, and eight on the B string. Uh, uh. That's the idea with that, okay? And uh, of course you can do, uh, you could actually uh, play that what I've notated actually, and just move it up from the fifth fret to the 10th fret and 12th fret to get your one, four, five. So maybe. What are the chords outlined? Yeah, so what I, the only thing I've got notated is sort of this riff on A7. And then I showed a way. And again, you're picking on the A string and plucking on the G and B this time on the D7, okay? But you could also do it down here using the same strings as the example in A, right? Just move it up to the 10th fret. A7 to D7, and you could get the five chord too. You can get the E.
that's the idea with that one. All right. And uh, I'm going to show lots of other kind of country stuff in coming weeks when we do volume two, volume three of this. Um, that kind of stuff is really fun, too. Uh, I'll notate something like that. Uh, kind of play, you know. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. <laughs> How come when I play it, it doesn't sound the same? I uh, just got to get it under the fingers. Keep working it, all right? Go slow, right? It's going to take you going. Ah. All right, stick with it. Go slow. You'll get it. Start to get it a little bit uh, faster. <laughs> cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, I got a couple minutes left for the last example, a little bit of a funk example. And so we were talking about disco a little bit. This is sort of what I was thinking a little bit is, is disco. We actually have a KC, the Sunshine Band, is on Guitar Tricks, I believe. I can't remember how it went, but uh, it's on there. So I'll pull some disco examples out for volume two. How does that sound? But I, I immediately felt like funk was, was a good choice for this. Although this particular example is more of a James Brown kind of thing. Okay. Uh, exercise, exercise nine. And what we're playing off of is E9, E dominant nine, seventh fret of the A string, sixth fret of the D string. And then barring down with your ring finger on the top three strings, seventh fret. This gives you a dominant nine. This is like the funk chord. All right, so this example actually starts with your pinky on the, you're holding this chord, but you got your pinky on the ninth fret of the high string, okay? So. So this is the example I came up with, very James Brownish, right? Now the key with funk rhythm stuff like this, they call they kind of call this skanking a little bit or like scratching. You've got the 16th note down up, down up groove going. You can see on the staff, you've got four strums tied together with the flags, right? And that's showing you down up, down up for every beat. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. The key with this example is that you're gonna hit chords on just one of those strums and then have a bunch of muted strums in between. So. So do you see that we've got a downstroke on the first chord when you add the ninth fret? And then an up down, and then on the next up, it comes down to the seventh fret, back to the, just that straight E9. So, so just take these four strums at a time, right? Right? That's kind of the way you want to approach it. And then move on to the next one. Okay. So after that, it goes down, up, down, and an up, two frets down. Okay, so. Keep going from there, okay? Then it's a downstroke and then an upstroke, one more fret up. So. And then eventually you're gonna get back to the seventh fret. So you've got this chromatic motion right there, right? So. There you go too, the prints, right? <laughs> right on. We still got some prints up there. So uh, check it out, everybody. Anyway, yeah, get your funk on with this stuff. Uh, only way to get this under your fingers, if especially if you're not used to it, you just got to go slow. And it's also sort of a chore to get that pressed down on the chord on the upstroke. That's a really difficult thing to do and get used to. So you want to just go slow with it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. A little bit of a funk primer, right? 
All right, everybody. Hope you uh, enjoyed some of the examples tonight. Got some cool stuff. I really feel like uh, you guys like the country thing. I'm going to add some more country stuff in coming weeks, okay? A uh, really important announcement tonight, actually, is that I will be away next week, okay? So unfortunately, there's no session next Friday. There won't be a session next Friday, but I will be back the week after, okay? So uh, no live session next Friday, but the week after on Friday, we'll be back to our regular thing, okay? And I'll probably come back with Styles vo Volume 2, all right? <laughs> So uh, I apologize for not being able to do it next week, but uh, it's vacation season, right? So <laughs> there you go. Absolutely, yeah. All right, Vietnam, excellent. Judah, I love it when you join us. Thanks so much. <laughs> cool, man. Awesome. Right on, John. Well, thanks, Andre. I appreciate it. Everybody take care, all right? We'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks for joining tonight. And we'll see you later. Two weeks. We'll see you. Cheers. <laughs>